Hello toy fans and welcome to Plastic Action UK. Today I bring you my most useful tools for figure photography. Right, I'm going to start with uh, one of my favourites and it's Blue Tack. Uh, sounds really simple. Um, Blue Tack and of course a bit of cheese wax. Now the cheese wax um, and the Blue Tack, I don't, I use them, I use them both. Um, but for vastly different things. In some of my shots I use um, blood effects. Uh, if I can get one, so I use blood effects. And um, I don't really want to be sticking these on with a piece of blue tack because because sorry. If you don't if you don't hide it like that, when as soon as you squash it against something you see the you see the blue tack all around it. So what I want to do is I use a bit of this. So I use a bit of cheese wax and you can find this on Baby Bells and uh, I think you can actually buy it as well. And if I get my faithful assistant, Mr. Mr. Poole. And if you stick it, just stick it to there. You need a little bit. It doesn't, it's not too bad. If you're in a hot studio though, be warned that this will um, turn to putty eventually and things start falling off. But it works like this. So I'm going to stick it to the back and it looks like someone's just blown his head, brains out. So that's ideal for that. Uh, just be careful so it can stain. I know it's, so it can stain on some um, some figures but um, most seem to be fine. So to get it back off just use a bit of that. Get that back off. And for the trusted blue tack, I use blue tack for my cutouts and also for my effects like uh, this one here so this is my bubble effect I did this for a shot quite a while ago so what I would, would do is something like that big blob of it on there because it's quite a heavy and then I would just set it like that and if he was underwater it looked like he was breathing but the blue tack will hold even if it gets really warm it still holds pretty well and it comes in a big packet like this quite flat and a big packet and I I go through absolute tons of this just because I uh, lose bits I get there's bits of all oh, this bits of crap gets stuck in it so you end up throwing bits away um, though me I often step on it get it in ground in the carpet which I'm always popular but those that's probably my first one and probably my most useful. I've, I've also used it in the past. You know when you get a figure and he's he's not standing too well and you've got him in a weird, weird position. Bit of blue tack under the feet. Cause it, bit of blue tack under the feet. Like this. Eventually like this. And you can just, it'll stick and he'll stay. Just like that. So, first one, blue tack. If you haven't got it in your in your kit bag, get it. Next up on my list, I have super glue. Um, it says what it says on the tin, really. Super glue uh, it comes in all different shapes and sizes. I like to use uh, Gorilla Glue with the uh, brush and the nozzle. Uh, this is actually uh, is also a gel, but you can only can get a Loctite um, super glue gel as well. I use the gel because if I can get this fucking open without chewing it, you can see where I've chewed it before. Yeah, it doesn't run everywhere. It's quite gloopy and you can just control it a little bit better, and especially with the brush. I like the brush just because like, you can dab it on. Um, this also comes with the nozzle. Not that I um, work for Gorilla Glue, but uh, obviously if you're watching, hint, hint. Uh, fantastic to have in there. I, view, I use it all the time for just a little bit. Uh, I can be a little bit uh, heavy handed with some of my stuff, especially the dios and pieces and some of the props um, recently. I broke that, which is amazing, thank you. I dropped it and it just went everywhere. So I will be using the glue very soon to fix that. Um, but not just that, you know, I've used it on figures as well, especially when you've got little pouches or something on some of the figures. I'm trying to think of some of the figures I've glued. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Um, nothing comes to mind, which is always useful. And you know, you just dab a bit of glue, put them back on, and hey presto always useful to have in your kit bag.
Next up on my list is my knife, uh, my little utility knife. Just keep make sure they're sharp. Uh, don't have a blunt knife. Uh, you'll just me. They are more dangerous blunt knives than sharp knives. Um, when you're doing something and you miss, that's what you do. You got a lovely, you got a lovely scar. I mean, a lovely sharp knife would have cut through, and I would have uh, saved me that. So brilliant for having those. When you get these little props, you buy these little props on eBay or wherever you get them from. They'll always come out like a little burr on the bottom where they've um, out of the mould. So when you try and set them over, they often rock, fall over. Use the knife. One of these sounds really stupid. Just take the bottom off, take it off. So it's a nice flat edge and that will sit forever and a day nicely on the floor on the table wherever hey presto and the other thing is the when you comes when it comes to these when it comes to little glasses you try and use them with different figures and you'll find that sometimes the hands don't hold i use a little it's a little wire cutter it looks like it's um i've best seen better days it's got a few digs in there now Simple, simple little things is I literally carefully clip the bottom of that, and now once I heat this plastic, it will sit in someone's hands a lot better so I can get those shots where they're drinking. Just little things like that. You, I've used it for trimming little bits of plastic, it's absolutely fantastic. It gives you a nice flat edge there. I don't know if you can see, nice, lovely flat edge, so you can easily trim bits off they're really useful to have if you haven't got them it's just a pain in the ass when you've got something that won't sit or when you need something that needs trimming you know what it cost next to nothing stick them in your toolbox and uh, you're good to go my next one on the list nope it's not a kitchen it's tweezers believe it or not um, I've used tweezers. I've got a long pair and I've got a short pair. Short pair here. And I've used these absolutely bloody loads. Uh, when you've got loads of figures in your dio and one of them drops a bloody gun. Wouldn't believe it. He's right in the middle. The worst thing you want to do is you want to have to start unpicking figures just to get the bloody gun out. I've got a long pair of um, tweezers. I go in and just pick it out and bring it out. It's that simple. And then I extract the figure that I want and put it back together, or I leave it out if I can't see it in the in it anyway. Um, but I use it all the time. Uh, it sounds really stupid, like on my kitchen setup. If I was to use the cupboards, yeah, to try and get two fingers in there. So, <laughs> sounds a bit rude. Uh, with the glass to try and put it in there, you know, it's a bit of an ass, a bit of a pain in the ass, and especially when you've got a few of them if you want to fill up the shelf. So at the end of the day, I pick it up. Boom, straight away. If I want to put another one in, just as easy, right next to it, and I can just use it to to arrange however I want. It's so simple an idea, but I tell you what, it's something I see people struggling with. I've seen them trying to get in there, you know, moving stuff around. A pair of tweezers, I tell you what, and you can knock everything over with them as well. So, simple idea. Definitely worth having. Next up, I've got my little tray. Now, I can't remember exactly where I got it from. I think it was the range or it might have been Ikea or somewhere like that. And I use this absolutely all the time. Next to my dio shots, next to any shot I'm doing, I've got, I get what I want. So I put the hands in there. I've got these, these flame effects, a couple of pint glasses, you know, some more effects there. And rather than having them in piles everywhere and you can knock them and it, knock them on the floor lose lots of little bits you know these these hands you know they're they're not cheap to replace uh, last thing you need is to lose them under a cupboard or get they get hoovered up or something so do you know what i use one of these and it, it just keeps everything nice and tidy and everywhere i need it all the time they're not very much but i tell you what it will just save you missing loads of little bloody bits right Let's talk about wood, and I'm talking particularly about these skewers or toothpicks. Really cheap to pick up again. All these things that I mentioned, they, they really are cheap, and uh, but effective. So I break mine down all the time, especially when after a while they, they get a bit uh, blunt. So just use your 
snipper and then make another sharp and that should go straight into your foam board. I use a lot of foam board for bases just so I can use uh, a bit of wood, I can prop it up, I can use these as stands. So if I wanted to have, if I had a diode backdrop and I just want to use one piece, I could uh, pin them between the two or lean them back and they would be they'd be absolutely ideal. Can you see those? No, let's move in a bit. Just like that, you could actually have them against there. I've used that quite a few times. The toothpicks are brilliant again. They are ideal for if you've got like a shoe or something and you can just poke them up in there and if you've got them doing a high kick they will hold them in place. Um, as for the skewers, I've often used them as, uh, these here, I've used them as flight stands. So if you uh, position it into the character, so you know, through his uh, buttock, you can position him. So, I don't know if you can see that, let's move it back a bit. So he is flying. Let's just try and get that nice tiny joint on there. So have his hands out a little bit. There you go, you could have the illusion that he is flying. I know you can't see his head. But with the, um, have I got a flame effect here? So if you have that underneath, you can have that back here, just just like that. So if you position it just like that one there, which isn't going too well. Well done. And you have it like that. It would just look like the rocket booster's coming out of his um, out of his boot and going down. That also hides the skewer quite well. Obviously I can move it around a little bit to hide it a bit more, but you get the gist of it. So let me see the other one. So you get the other one. And you or you could use your trusty blue tack and stick that bad boy to the bottom. Just a little bit on there. Should don't need a lot at all. Or if I stick it, oh no. It's all gonna fall over now. So if I stick it there. So I stick it like that. And that would stick to the bottom of his sh shoe or his boot like that, like so. And hey presto, you could get in a bit more there. Or is that gonna hold? And that holds just like that. And that's not bad at all. So you get the gist of it, you know, requires a little bit of playing around with to try and get that right. Get the angle right and you can hide that wooden skewer quite easily and you've got a really cool simple effect that doesn't cost the earth sometimes when you use those the plastic tamashi effects or um flight stands they can be a bit clunky and they still can show especially when it's like th thinner parts of his ankles these tiny little skewers hardly anything and they get hidden really well so next to nothing but again really effective always use them Right, this one is a simple one, but it might save your figures. Now, some people use a hairdryer, and no, this is not a cup of tea. This is hot water. Um, it sounds really stupid, but if you haven't tried it already, when you get your, um, like Mez usually the Mezcos or some of your new figures, it can be a bit stiff trying to get uh, hands on, necks off, and all sorts. So what you do is you literally hot water, let him dangle his hand in there for a few, for, for 30 seconds. Right, so 30 seconds, this is, see the plastic's become very pliable, um, which is heat plastic it does, and it just pops off lovely. Contra and this is the other one, so I have, I've heated this one, this one pops off lovely, this one, yeah, you can feel it squeaky. You got to really, really careful because these things break. But he's a bit can be a bit of a pain in the ass to get his hand off. See, so instead of risking it, comes off easy, goes back on like a dream. And I tell you what, you will save so many figures. I got a uh, figure recently, uh, Deadpool from um, is it Mayfax, and it was the joints were so bloody tight on it this one here um, I couldn't I couldn't move it around I think it's still you can still hear it's quite tight there so 
I managed to get this one moving quite nicely. Uh, so I used hot water on this one. I like using the hot water first rather than uh, using anything else. Um, if I if it doesn't free up, this one hasn't freed up very well with hot water. I'm going to use the hair dryer. Um, I usually use the hair dryer as a as as my second resort because it's uh, hot water is just a little bit more friendly for figures uh, without uh, using uh, you know um, your hot, your hair dryer in the joints to try and get that to free up but you can he see in here it's still quite tight see not happy with that at all so that's going to have to get adjusted I am going to use that hair dryer on that at some point but uh, not tonight but like I said it freed up everything else these, these went really well these were really tight super tight and that's done really well and it's just been able to do that you know these were quite tight on here I used hot water again just freed up lovely really really sort of a soft way to try and uh, soften up the plastic and get you posing but like I said that hip joint I think I'm gonna have to wrap, ramp it up a little bit and use a hair dryer on that bad boy right thanks for watching guys really appreciate it again um, I hope this helps you in some way and you managed to save some time and pulling your hair out uh, just by using some of these simple simple but effective uh, pieces of kit. If you've uh, come across anything that you find useful, that you use all the time, do you know what? Message us on the website, on Facebook, or on Instagram. Uh, we always want to hear. And if you're watching this on YouTube, do you know what? Like, um, like our page, subscribe, and also leave a comment as well because we love out hearing your comments we love getting the feedback from you guys you know like i said we are toy collectors just like you and uh, we love what we do so stay safe out there and as always plastic action out